Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review the newest racket from Yonex. Okay, this is the ArcSaber 11 Pro. And not only am I going to review this racket, I'm going to compare with two other rackets, which I think is the best of the series. So from the Astrox series, this is the 100 ZX. And from the Nano Flare series, this is the Nano Flare 800. I'm quite excited, so let's go. Okay, so before we compare the three rackets, I want to show you what comes in the package when you buy the new Arcsaber 11 Pro. So this is the very standard bag that you get. There's a very nice little zipper here where you can put your coins, wallet or keys. Right? And um, what's interesting is that other than the racket itself, right, this time around it came with some stickers and a few collaterals and the collaterals show what comes um, as the new feature and what you can expect out of the racket. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is the nice metallic finish that you see, right, where it's a bit greyish and red in colour. I thought this is one of the nicer coloured rackets that Yonex has produced. Right, the standard features that you see in most of the Yonex professional racket will be the super slim shaft and the e-booster cap. Right, but what you'll notice that is new is this control assist bumper on top over here. Uh, what it's supposed to do is supposed to hold the strings in place when the shutter hits the racket so that minimal shifting should give you higher accuracy. The other exciting feature that they boast about is this elastic frame right, where it's supposed to be more elastic on certain parts and less elastic on certain parts. And what it's supposed to do is supposed to improve the hold of the shutter when the shutter makes contact with the strings. And that's supposed to improve the power but yet not affect the accuracy or the stability of the racket. So all this sounds quite exciting, right? Let's go and try and see how it performs in the court. Okay, so firstly, right, I use the Arcsaber 11 Pro. Can you tell me how does it feel to receive a smash from this racket? Uh, the smash was powerful but slow. Oh, powerful but slow. Yeah. Okay, then what about the... Astrox 100 zigzag. Exactly. The Astrox was very steep and very hard, uh, very difficult to receive. Okay, then the last one is the Nano Flare 800. The Nano Flare was very fast, but it's not as deadly as the Astrox. Okay, so overall these three rackets, right, which one is the one that you don't want to receive a smash, right? That means it's the hardest racket to defend. Uh, definitely the Astrox. The 100 zigzag. Exactly. Yes. Okay, would you say, uh, is there one that is easier to take amongst the three? Uh, I think it's the Arctable because it's slower. Oh, uh, okay, can. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you. Okay, so we're back here at the studios and we've taken some measurements um, from the racket, right? And I'm going to explain to you what some of these numbers mean and how does it translate right into performance in the court. So you see over the last items here, right, the flexibility, uh, what we did is that we put a 2kg weight at the head of the racket and we measured the displacement. So the larger the displacement, the more flexible the shaft, the lesser the displacement, right, the stiffer the shaft, right? So you see, uh, the 100ZZ has the smallest number, which means it's the stiffest racket. And the Arcsaber 11 Pro has the largest number, so it's the most flexible racket. What does this mean? Right? This means that the power transfer is more effective in the 100 ZZ as compared to the Arcsaber 11, which means that the smash is actually deadlier. This is confirmed by Edwin right? when he was defending my smashes. He said that the 100 ZZ was the most difficult to defend and the Arcsaber 11 Pro was the easiest. So these are the numbers and we'll go through more of these numbers in our next racket review. Okay, so here's my final verdict about the three rackets. Okay, the statistics don't lie, right? All the numbers that you see uh, and the measurements that you see me take, those are real. Right? But it also takes a human's assessment of how does it perform in your hand and in your court. And in my opinion, I don't really think the Arcsaber 11 Pro is really a good racket. Now, I know that there are many reviewers there that's raving about this, but to me, the feeling when the shutter contacts the racket, it feels very dampened. You don't really get the feeling that it's very sharp and very accurate although the features are supposed to do that I, I don't know is it because I'm not so used to it To me the best record is still the 100 xx where there's a nice balance of power and accuracy This is my go-to record and I have two of those right? But you may want to consider the Nano Flag 800 if you are a very defensive player If you like to play quick shots like pushing and tapping This record will be for you Okay, so um, I think that 100 ZZ is a balanced racket, right? If you like to smash, but you also like to play different kind of shots like the softer ones, this is good. If you like quick plays, tapping, pushing, defense, Nano Flare 800. 
Arcsaber 11 Pro. I'm sorry, but I don't really have a good impression of this racket. Right. So, but the statistics are there, the numbers are there, it's for you to make a decision yourself. I'll see you in the next episode.